When I was preparing for my exam, I was practicing writing. And because I really wanted to impress my teacher, I decided to employ a strategy of packing my writing with as many flowery expressions as I could. Those included idioms and phrasal verbs, a quote, and even a proverb. Obviously, everything in my essay revolved around those expressions, leaving remaining room to the main idea I was meant to be philosophizing about. When my teacher read my essay, he handed it back to me with no mark. And I wondered what was wrong, and my teacher told me the following. Lilia, in general, your level of vocabulary in your writing is way, way, way beyond advanced. But what worries me most is that by trying to impress the examiner so hard, your attempt becomes extremely obvious. And even further than that, almost nobody speaks in this way. So if you want to score a high mark, try leaning more towards natural, using idioms only if they're necessary, and don't bend over backwards, sacrificing the flow of the narrative. What's wrong with sophisticated language, you may ask? Truth be told, I'm a big proponent of rare vocabulary. What's more, there's even an IELTS criterion that says that the successful band aid candidate should be able to skillfully use less common words. And in terms of the speaking lexical resource criterion, the band aid candidate is the one who uses less common and idiomatic language skillfully. Doesn't that mean that we should throw all forces towards gleaning less common vocabulary and injecting it into our speech at every single occasion? If we look at IELTS Band 9 description of the lexical resource criterion, though, we will find that the successful Band 9 candidate uses vocabulary with, with full uses vocabulary with full flexibility and precision in all topics, and uses idiomatic language naturally and accurately. I reckon that's the exact thing that confused my teacher. When we listen to native English speakers, be it in films or in media, we can't help but notice how spontaneous they seem to be with their language. And I sense that would have to be a reason why we can so easily identify someone who is, uh, whose first language is English. Native speakers of English seem to have an unreachable quote-unquote talent of putting complex things into very few precise words or communicating a long-winded descriptive sentence in an idiom they've drawn from the treasure trove of vocabulary. When learners like you and I speak English in an exam, it very often seems like we build our interactions around the beautiful expressions we're trying hard to squeeze into our speech. That truth about our method is being recognised subconsciously by native speakers who very often work as examiners in IELTS or CPE, and our speech or our writing gets registered as non-natural or pretentious. So what should we learners do to score high in tests? One, practice sentence openers and linkers in addition to impressive words or fancy idioms. You can also watch my video titled How to Use Varied Grammar in Speech to learn more about semi-fixed sentence openers to give you an idea of what I just meant by that. Two, practice vocabulary in contexts that are relevant to you. When we link cold-faced vocabulary with our soft and snug and cosy personal experiences, it gets extra memorable. Practice saying things about yourself and your opinions using the words you're trying to master. On balance, while being sophisticated might create an impression of a person being well-versed, it might also spoil the natural flow that we associate with naturalness of fluent English. Although, to a large extent, I agree that exam scenarios are quite rare to come across in real life, they do constitute the number of life experiences we might find ourselves in. What we're being asked to do in an exam classroom is not to imitate a real life conversation, pretending the examiner is simply not there, but to use English to communicate effectively, considering specific limitations of an exam situation. That's going to be it from me for today. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe to my channel for more conscious education, inspiration, and I will see you very soon.